Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. In this video we will be learning about the ulna nerve. The ulna nerve is also known as the musician's nerve because it controls the fine movement of the fingers. It arises from the medial cord of the brachial plexus. For those of you who haven't seen my video on brachial plexus, please refer to my channel playlist. Now in this video, we will be learning about the root value, the course, the relations, branches and clinical anatomy of the ulna nerve. Now firstly, let's look at the root value. The root value of the ulna nerve is C7 to T1, that is C7, C8 and T1. Now before I list out the main points of the course of the ulna nerve, let me explain it to you with a simple diagram. The ulna nerve enters the arm and reaches the level of insertion of the coracobrachialis till which it courses through the medial side. Here it pierces the medial intermuscular septum as you can see right here and enters the posterior compartment of the arm which is indicated by these dotted lines. At the level of the cubital fossa, it runs behind the medial epicondyle of the humerus and can be palpated. This is the lower end of the humerus that I have drawn right here and this is the medial epicondyle. The ulna nerve passes behind it. The ulna nerve then passes in between the two heads of the flexor carpi ulnaris as you can see right here and it enters into the forearm anteriorly. It then passes medially between the flexor digitorum profundus muscle and the flexor digitorum superficialis muscle. As I have shown right here, it passes medially between the flexor digitorum profundus and the flexor digitorum superficialis muscle. At the wrist, it passes above the flexor retinaculum and enters into the palm. In the palm, it divides into a superficial and a deep branch. As you can see, a superficial and a deep branch. This is the flexor retinaculum. Now, while listing out the course of the ulna nerve in main points, we have the ulna nerve enters the arm and reaches the level of the coracobrachialis till which it courses through the medial side. Here, it pierces the medial intermuscular septum and enters the posterior compartment of the arm. At the level of the cubital fossa, it runs behind the medial epicondyle and can be palpated. It passes between the two heads of the FCU, that is the flexor carpi ulnaris, and enters into the forearm anteriorly. It passes medially between the flexor digitorum profundus and the flexor digitorum superficialis. At the wrist, it passes over the flexor retinaculum and enters the palm. In the palm, it divides into the superficial and deep branches. These are the main points. Now looking at the relations of the ulna nerve through this diagram, we can see that in the arm, the ulna nerve runs medially. At the level of the cubital fossa, it is present behind the medial epicondyle. In the forearm, it is present anteriorly between the flexor carpi ulnaris and between the flexor digitorum profundus and the flexor digitorum superficialis. At the wrist, it lies anterior to the flexor retinaculum. Moving on to the relations of the ulna nerve, we can see that in the arm, the ulna nerve runs medially. At the level of the cubital fossa, present behind the medial epicondyle. In the forearm, it is present between the flexor carpi ulnaris and between the flexor digitorum profundus and flexor digitorum superficialis anteriorly. At the wrist, it is anterior to the flexor retinaculum. Now looking at the branches of the ulna nerve through this diagram, we can see that it has no branches in the arm. Now looking at the branches in the forearm, we can see that it has a muscular branch that supplies the flexor carpi ulnaris right here, the flexor carpi ulnaris and the medial half of the flexor digitorum profundus, the medial half that is towards the medial side, this side. It provides a palma cutaneous branch that you can see right here that passes above the flexor retinaculum 
and supplies the skin of the hypothena eminence. This is the skin of the hypothena eminence. It provides a dorsal cutaneous branch as you can see here with the dotted line which winds around the medial border of the hand and reaches the dorsum that is the back side of the hand. Here it supplies the medial half of the skin of the dorsum of the hand and the same branch extends into the proximal part of the medial two and a half fingers. The dorsal cutaneous branch winds around the medial border of the hand and reaches the dorsum that is the back surface. Here it supplies the medial half that is this is the medial half. It supplies the medial half of the skin of the dorsum of the hand right here. The same branch extends into the proximal part of the two and a half fingers of the medial side. It provides an articular branch that supplies the wrist joint. The branches in the palm include the superficial and the deep branch. The superficial branch supplies the palmaris brevis and the skin while the deep branch supplies the remaining 14 muscles. Moving on to the branches of the ulna nerve, we can see that it has no branches in the arm. Now looking at the branches in the forearm, we have a muscular branch, a palmar cutaneous branch and a dorsal cutaneous branch. The muscular branch supplies the flexor carpi ulnaris and the medial half of the flexor digitorum profundus. The palmar cutaneous branch passes above the flexor retinaculum and supplies the skin of the hypothenar eminence. That is the hypothenar eminence. Dorsal cutaneous branch winds around the medial border of the hand and reaches the dorsum. Here it supplies the medial half of the skin of the dorsum of the hand. The same branch extends into the proximal part of the two and a half fingers. Now moving on to the articular branch, the ulna nerve supplies the wrist joint. The branches in the palm include the superficial branch and the deep branch where the superficial supplies the palmaris brevis and the skin whereas the deep supplies the remaining 14 muscles. The remaining 14 muscles include the three muscles of the hypothenar eminence, two lumbricals, eight introtiae and the adductor pollicis. Now let's look at the clinical anatomy of the ulna nerve. The ulna nerve lesion at the wrist produces the ulna claw hand which is characterized by hyperextension at the metacarpophalangeal joints. Now this is the metacarpophalangeal joint and there's hyperextension. Flexion at the interphalangeal joints. These are the interphalangeal joints and there will be flexion here. Intermetacarpal spaces are hollowed out due to wasting of interosseous muscles. Now looking at the sensory loss. The sensory loss is confined to the medial one third of the palm and medial one and a half fingers including their nail beds. Now the sensory loss is confined to the medial one third of the palm that is right here which includes the medial one and a half fingers that is the little finger and the ring finger the half of the ring finger including their nail beds. The vasomotor changes include that the skin areas with sensory loss is warmer due to arteriolar dilatation. The trophic changes are that the long-standing cases of paralysis lead to dry and scaly skin. The paralysis of dorsal interosseae and the power of adduction of the thumb, flexion of the ring and little fingers are lost. As you can see in this representative picture, this is the ulna nerve. It courses right here and it reaches here. It divides into a deep branch and a superficial branch as you can see right here. I hope you found this video helpful. To get updates on my latest videos, click on the subscribe button. To get notifications, tap on the bell icon. Thank you for watching.